Well, I'm going to say n- no, not really, not really an incident. It's a uh, the hydraulic condition is set up, but let's look at when we look at a backflow incident, that means something had to happen. So there's a cross connection. So uh, in the case of my bathroom sink, there wasn't a cross connection because there was an air gap. Uh, there's a hydraulic condition. There was a hydraulic condition in that case. Back siphonage was occurring. And there needs to be a hazard. So if there's a cross connection, a hydraulic condition, and a hazard, then that's a backflow incident. Because that means that hazard got pulled into the drinking water supply. So that's that's how that's how we look at a backflow incident. So three things have to occur all at the same time. Uh, has to have a cross connection, a hazard, and a hydraulic condition. That's when we have an incident. And an, inis- an incident is obviously that's something more uh, more serious than just. Uh, back siphonage occurring, you know, like if the back siphonage is occurring and air is being sucked in, uh, you know, that indicates there's a hydraulic problem, but that's not an incident in the sense that contaminants or pollutants got into the distribution system. So um, let's look at the hydraulic condition. Just brief summary, backflow, undesirable, undesirable reversal of flow of water or other substances into the potable distribution system. That means water goes the way you don't want it to go. That doesn't mean that you know water normally goes from east to west, but then as conditions change, it starts moving from west to east in the distribution system. That's just normal distribution as water is being used. But it's undesirable reversal of flow. So I want water to come out of the pipes into my bucket. When it goes from my bucket into the pipes, that's not desirable. Uh, there's back siphonage and back pressure. Back siphonage, in this case, water normally flows from left to right. It's being sucked from right to left. And that's defined as when we get sub-atmospheric pressure in the distribution piping. So sub-atmospheric pressure below 0 PSIG or below 14.7 PSI, it's below atmospheric pressure. That is uh, back siphonage. Back pressure is when the down, well, let's be an example of back siphonage here. Basically, uh, we lose pressure out here in the distribution system. Where's my arrow right here? And the back siphonage occurs more up in here because as the water pulls down, it creates a subatmospheric pressure up here. So that's when back siphonage occurs. Back pressure is when pressure in the downstream piping um, overcomes the supply pressure. So if I say the, the water coming into our building here is say it's 85 PSI, now, if something in the building creates a higher pressure than 85 PSI in the, the distribution piping, that forces the water back out into the distribution system, that would be back pressure. That, a typical thing for that would be like a recirculating system. Here we have a well system. The well pump is, uh, creates a higher pressure than the distribution system, which is also tied into the irrigation system in case the well goes dry. So if that well pump kicks on and it's higher pressure than the distribution system, that would be back pressure. On any type of recirculating system, you know, of a, a, a boiler system, chiller system, uh, decorative fountain type system, uh, anything like that where there's recirculating, that's a potential for back pressure if that pump creates enough pressure to overcome the system uh, piping. The system pressure in the pipe. Uh, <clears throat> so back pressure or back siphonage, a cross connection, meaning there has to be a physical connection. Uh, it's a direct or an indirect cross connection, uh, actual uh, or potential connection between potable water and any non-potable substance or source is how we define a cross connection. If it's indirect, it's subject to back siphonage only. If it's direct, it's subject to back pressure or back siphonage. So say in the fountain here behind me, if you guys can see that, and my screen is really tiny, but I think you should be the bigger screen. So there's a recirculating system here. The pump continually recirculates. If the makeup line to that is into the piping system that is under pressure, and that pressure is high enough, that could create back pressure. If it just goes over the lip and drops down into the reservoir, then it could only uh, back siphonage would be the only type of back pressure, back flow that could occur. 
because you'd have to have it back. You'd have to have a, a sub-atmospheric pressure in the pipe that would suck the water up over the rim and into the drinking water supply. So uh, those connections have to be there. That doesn't mean backflow is occurring. It doesn't mean there's an incident. It just means the connection's there. So anytime you have a recirculating system like this, unless you're filling it up by hand, there's a makeup line, which means there's a cross connection somehow. The, the, all the pipes, that, all the fountains I've seen at USC where I've checked it out, they all have backflow preventers on them. So there's cross connection, but it's protected. Um, if you have a, a, you know, just a recirculating fountain in your backyard, you very well may not have a backflow preventer on it, but you might have an air gap on it. So in that type of situation, you know, if the air gap is there, it, it is protected. Uh, or a direct cross connection, which is when the subject to back pressure and back siphon. So if subject to back pressure, it's going to be subject to back siphonage. Then we need to have a hazard. That means uh, if if the water being siphoned up into the drinking water supply is drinking water, well, that's not really a problem. But if we have some sort of hazard, a health hazard or a non-health hazard, we have two different degrees of hazard we, we normally deal with. Lethal hazard is a special uh, it's just a special defined term that we used to um, mean you know, radioactive material and uh, raw sewage, and you have to protect it with an air gap. Um, but typically, it's, I, I, I'm not sure I like that term because I, a health hazard is lethal. So, you know, we could just say, you know, we could call it a Death Star hazard or whatever. We just named a lethal hazard because that's what uh, it is lethal. But a health hazard is also lethal. So pollutant or non-health hazard is something that's aesthetically objectionable. That means if you uh, ingest it, it's not going to cause illness or death, but it's going to taste funny, look funny, smell funny. Uh, you're not going to like it. The water purveyor typically does not like selling that type of water because they don't like their customers to be unhappy all the time. So uh, it's, it's a pollutant, but it's not going to be a health issue. A health hazard or a contaminant is something that if, if it's ingested, it could cause illness or death. So one of these things need to be present um, uh, along with uh, a cross connection and a hydraulic condition, such as back, some sort of backflow, back siphonage, back pressure occurring in order for an incident to occur. So to see how an incident would occur, uh, this is just your typical distribution. That's not a typical incident. So the made-up distribution system, just a model to show you how it works. So uh, normally water flows from the treatment plant and it goes out to our customers. You might have industrial customers, uh, residential customers, whatever. That's how the water normally flows. Let's say we have a main break. If there's a main break, we lose pressure here. Uh, it doesn't have to be a main break. It could be firefighting, it could be a uh, pump failure, uh, just flushing, whatever, a, a sudden loss of system pressure will either way will cause that. So that happens here. And what happens is the water starts flowing towards that point. And as it does that, if there are cross connections, then this hydraulic condition is back siphonage is set up so that it could draw something back in. So if there's a cross connection with a hazard, that hazard could be drawn into the distribution system, <coughs> and and then we have an incident. Okay, so that is when we have a backflow incident. Something actually got into the distribution system. Uh, hopefully, we found out about it very quickly, not um, because customers have been complaining for months. That would be a bad thing. You want to find out about it very fast, uh, uh, hopefully as soon as possible. So in this case, industrial, whatever it was in the industrial complex or maybe from residents, got into the distribution system and it's there. The problem is if all of a sudden you fix this thing, uh, the water flow returns to normal. Now, we're, we didn't fix the problem. We didn't deal with the cross connection. We didn't deal with the backflow incident. We just fix the leak and maybe we flush the system and now um everything seems good now the tests are coming back fine 
but if, if there's another hydraulic uh, condition changes, then again, that uh, this hazard, whatever it is, could get back in the distribution system. So uh, we not only want to make the test results good right away, we want to find the problem and fix that problem. 